Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. I'm Trish Crosby and today I will be showing you how to paint this easy purple sunset painting. This painting is very beginner friendly so if you're new to watercolor painting please consider giving this one a try. It's not too hard. I'm starting off with a Payne's Gray. This Payne's Gray is Winsor & Newton's professional Payne's Gray. Feel free to use whatever you have in your palette. You can also use different shades or different intensities of whatever colors you want to use in this painting. As you can tell, I taped off the horizon line because I have a hard time making that a really straight line, so it's just easier to tape it off. Now that I've got the gradient of the sky in, I'm using a small piece of paper towel to lift out the sun. And some cadmium yellow to paint around the sun to kind of make it pop. All of this paint is wet right now, so the colors are just kind of flowing together. I had to get a cat hair out of there. I have two baby kitties. One's a big rag doll, he's my black kitty, and I have a little tiny, um, I guess she's a tabby. She's kind of like a medium hair length tabby. They're my babies. I'm just using the paper towel to lift out some clouds. And then adding a little touch of water to lift out a little bit more. It's just some Payne's Gray right there to kind of add some dimension to the bottom of the clouds. And then I mixed up some purple to make some other clouds and then I'm going to blend those clouds out because they're a little bit too dark. I'm also adding in some carmine red down at the bottom. Just a smidge. I wasn't really that happy with the way that the sky turned out. I think the carmine red was the wrong color to use up here but when you're painting sometimes you know your color selection won't turn out in the end and so I just decided to keep going. Now I'm just repositioning that washi tape to get so that I can get a straight line on the bottom of the horizon. It's a trick that I use whenever I'm doing I need straight lines I use the washi tape for it. I'm mixing together some really deep purple, some super saturated, and in the parts where I'm um, trying to leave the white parts, I'm kind of laying my brush flat as I go over that area so it just lightly grazes the top of the paper and gives me that dry brush effect. I'm adding a little bit more blue to this purple down at the bottom. I'm trying to get a gradient towards the bottom from a purple to a more blue purple. I 
and I probably should have made the opening in the center get wider as it got towards the bottom but hindsight's 2020. it is what it is at this point so i'm just deepening up that bluish purple down at the bottom and then i'm just lightly kind of brushing like dry brushing over some yellow highlights over the white spot to make it look like the sun is reflecting on the water and then I'm mixing in um, an orange to kind of give some more highlights to that And after I pulled the tape, I realized that the horizon wasn't that great, so it needed some help. <laughs> so the tape has to go back on. Much better. So at this point, I let the painting dry completely before I started any of the other details that I'm going to add in. Just adding in um, some tree branches right now and I'm so sorry that my hand is in the way it's kind of hard to hold the paintbrush and film this at the same time because doing tree branches you kind of need to have your brush at a certain angle adding in a little bit of blue to kind of tie in the clouds with the bottom part of this painting like I said, I wasn't very happy with the sky in this painting, so I was just kind of trying to doctor it up to make it look a little bit better. But So I'm using a rigger brush right now to add in these tree branches, and it's just there's no rhyme or reason to any of them. I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. That's the great thing about painting, you kind of get to create whatever you want on the paper. Even if it doesn't exist in nature, <laughs> you can make it look what, like whatever you want. And for these tree branches, this is just straight Winsor Newton Payne's Gray. Um, the professional Winsor & Newton Payne's Gray is very saturated in color, so that's why I used it straight out the pan. I actually bought a tube of it and then I just filled my pan because I actually put that pan, I made several like three or four pans and then I put them in all of my different palettes because I love Winsor & Newton's Pans Gray. So now I'm just putting in some random like dots and stuff to create these leaves on the, on the tree. To all of you who have commented on my previous paintings, I really appreciate all of your comments. Um, they kind of brighten my day, so thank you to all of you for giving me comments and critiquing and giving me honest feedback. I really appreciate your honest feedback. Like I said, I'm new to this. This is a new channel. I'm trying to grow my channel and I'm learning as I go. So thank you to all of you who have been on, open and honest with me. So down here at the bottom, I'm not using a rigger brush. I think it's like a number four brush, but it has a very pointy tip on it. So I'm able to get some really tight lines on it. And it, I hold the brush a certain way and I just kind of flick it to get these really um, cool lines that look like reeds or, or leaves coming up from the bottom. And yet again, this is just the Windsor & Newton's Payne's Gray. It looks black, but it's actually a very, very deep blue. If any of you watching are not subscribed to my channel, 
please consider subscribing. It's absolutely free and you can hit the bell notification if you would like to be notified when I upload new content. About 70% of my viewers are not subscribed, so I'd really appreciate new subscribers. So that'll do it for this painting today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day, everyone.